Let's do this. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. Good, good evening to you. Uh, good morning to you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you're going to record through this, through Zoom, is that right? Yep. Today? So I probably will drop, unless you're going to record um, video as well, I was going to drop video because I, I live in a very rural area. All we have is wireless. Mm -hmm. So many times the ping, the ping rate goes way up. And mm -hmm. then you get a lot of static on the line. So if you're going to do video recording, then I'll leave it on. If we're going to only do audio. Yeah, please leave it on. We record video. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Very good. We'll see how it goes. I turned off my VPN. I, so I'm eating every available with it, a piece of bandwidth I can. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Even I, I to live in rurals of India. So imagine <laughs> how bad it will it will be for me <laughs> that's completely fine like what happens is sometimes the video gets choppy i say a sorry in when i upload a video that the video is choppy because of these issues and this is bound to happen come on we are talking oh, across the world <laughs> yeah it's all what's happening today anyway so we all get it i guess <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of load on the systems too right so Exactly. And you're so not using Cisco WebEx, so never mind. I just <laughs> <laughs> that is something above my pay grade for now. <laughs> so how how's everything? Good. Good, good, good. Thank you. And uh, how did you write, uh, like my article in particular? Well, the thing I, I think I said to you that it was an easy read to you get through it and get at least a perspective of where things are. I think, I think right now that we use AI and machine learning all interchangeably it gets to be very confusing for people. What does all this mean? Where is it going? And it just gets really, really difficult for people. Correct. So I, I and, and I think, you know, there, it's not just AI and machine learning. There's other places in the world we use this, but, but I, the thing that your article did is it made it concise and easy. And it wasn't this long scientific, oh my gosh, I need a PhD in fill in the blank. And that, that was not <laughs> no, uh, Like what in the article did you like the most? 
except for the fact it was easy to read. I have to bring it back up because I've read so many things since then. I, you know, I, that's not fair. You didn't tell me there was going to be a quiz. I'd have to. No, 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 no. I just wanted to. I'd have to open it up and look at it again because honestly, I don't remember all the details too because I read it the day I got it, and I've been doing a bunch of other stuff since then. So I, I, <laughs> Like, I knew there was going to be a test. If I knew this was going to be my graduate level thing, I would have taken notes and been prepared for when the professor walks in and says, what did you like the best? I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I don't recall. Uh, the thing is, like, the, the entire article came into existence uh, based on the conversation we had last time. Because when we spoke about it, we spoke about what could be the punishments and what could be the, uh, how do I say treats for AI or what could, what could it I go, I go consequences, consequences and rewards. What are the kind Correct. of Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I tried to call it trick, trick or treats. <laughs> but I've actually had further thoughts since then on that very topic. So for, mm -hmm. let me give you this example. So if, if, uh, if you, let's go back to the kid, the child is learning to walk mm -hmm. and, and, falls down so he learns or she learns how to walk better because they don't want to fall down because there's pain mm -hmm. the pain is this is the thing where i said emo you're bringing emotion into the article see so i didn't remember some stuff and i said emotion is going to be four or five versions down but the more i think about it um if you're looking at machine learning and you say to the machine you know if you don't do this right what, what's going to happen to you well i'm going to turn you off well, then there needs to be some fear factor to the machine that doesn't want to be turned off. And so <laughs> now we're back to where you were. Immediately, we're back to the emotion piece of it. And I don't think there's an easy solution for it. I don't know whether there's an easy resolution. But so I think that the, 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 the consequences and the rewards, I don't know whether a machine will recognize that there are consequences or rewards other than just following the algorithm. If it goes down the wrong path of that algorithm, it just gets deleted. It doesn't know it's going to be deleted. It's not anticipating it's going to be deleted, maybe in the initial stages, because then we're at emotion. And I think that's going to be way, way too far ahead. And, and then we're getting back into going for the machine learning, where it is true machine learning, the algorithm piece to AI that is going to bring in my experiences and it's going to digest that. It's going to, it's broadening the definition that, that we're not ready to, to attack, I don't think, or, or put in a program. So that poor machine's going, okay, now I got to think about, are the recordings out here I got to take? Is there humans that have done something? It's going to have to bring all that together. And that's, we're way, 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 way down the road from that. But who knows? Somebody smarter than me will figure it out. Ah, uh, Yeah, let's see. Let's see how it goes. And to be brutally honest, there's some experiences we need with the machines like that. Like that is when we would be able to understand what is to be done. And the best bet would be have those, uh, how, do, how do I call it, those experiences in safe environments where it doesn't affect a lot of other people, any which way possible. So what's the, what experiences are you talking about? Give me, an, give me something concrete I can grab. <laughs> so think about it. When we talk about AI today or when we talk about AGI today, the machine which will have general intelligence, we think about what all it can do, but I don't know if anyone has thought about how it will be, like how we will interact with the software or program or that piece of being, whatever it is. Like it just, there are some movies where we come across how it can be. Like if we relate to Iron Man or if we relate to one of the Avengers movies, so there are those holographic, how do I say, there's that voice over which talks to you, you talk to it and then that's it happens. The interface. That's, the, that's the interface to humans. I have the machine interface back to me is that hologram and that voice. Exactly. Right? And yeah. when we talk about a super intelligent machine, you see that interface is going to matter a lot because if we like it or not, it is going to have an omnipresence because of the internet. It is going to be all over the world. <laughs> like this isn't, is it already, isn't it already all over the world with, with Alexa, Google Talk, all those kinds of things already? And all those are just machine learning assistants. So we already have it. The only thing we don't have is if it's going to project 
some moving hologram around, which I don't know why I want some hologram invading my bathroom. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know whether I think humans are going to need the, the hologram. You know, I know, I know Star Trek and all those movies put it in just because I think it's cool and maybe it will be easy, but do we really need it? I don't know. I, That's I think some question. people say, no, I really don't know. I just, you know, just talk to me. I'm good if you just talk to me. I don't need to see you do anything. <laughs> so what is your picture? Like, how would you want an AGI to be? I just, well, so if we look at the, where it all started, you know, we, we used to think that the, a chess game and a computer, you know, Dr. Watson and it beat the, you know, beat the chess player and goes, oh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that was what, 30 years ago, 40 years ago? I don't remember. Yeah. It was a long time ago. And all of a sudden that was, that was artificial intelligence. And now we look at that those chess games, you can get it on your PC. I mean, and, and so the intelligence there has progressed so much that we've gone from this big mainframe or a Cray computer to where it's there. And of course, then I know that it was moving, a robotic thing moving the chess pieces and now just moves an image. Am I, am I comfortable with the image? I am comfortable with an image, me. So I want something that's light, compact and can be anywhere, as well as know that when I say, no, I'm in the washroom, leave me alone until I come out that it knows that it's gonna leave me alone. I need, some, I need my alone time, Mr. Computer or Alexa. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's all I really need. I don't, I, unless, unless that image is going to do physically, pick up my mouse and do something with it, I don't need to see it, me personally. I don't, I don't need to see it. I don't think most people need to see it. They, they, I think it, that would be too scary. If, it, if we came out with that image now, people would go, oh my gosh, we're at the Terminators. <laughs> and, you know we're really in trouble here so I, I think we have a long long way to go but for me i just a voice is fine i like alexa use it a lot siri i use a lot um she doesn't understand me a lot of times i have to you know say come on Siri. and so but those are all getting better you remember when the first the first um, pcs came out and you would dictate documents and you thought oh this is so wonderful now you, people your age don't even think anything of it. I remember when these things were, we, they were just like, oh, I can't wait for it to come. And, <laughs> and, and Siri and, and Alexa and those types of devices, I think in the next five years are gonna dramatically change their skills, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're gonna change who they are. I mean, they're, they're, they're physical, if they, you can call them their physical form. Because I don't think, think, I think we're so concentrating on, let's get the algorithms so that they can learn and not worry about what they look like, right? So, so, so then when I say, so Siri or Alexa or, or whoever, Google, I don't want to leave anybody out, but any agent that we have in our home today who's been listening to the music I like to listen to. And, and then it's, so it knows what I like, conceivably, and, and, then it's, and then it says, well, hey, Chris, why don't you think about this song? And I look and I go, where did you come up with that idea? So we know that that algorithm there and the machine didn't learn right, or I need to own some that did, is the music that I listen to so broad that Alexa's confused. And, and so I think that's where most of the focus on those types of things are gonna be. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of the equation, those devices that control cars or other devices, we want them to do the, we want them to do it right. We don't want them to look like you know, some famous movie star or <laughs> we don't care right now. We just want the, what they do to be done correctly. Correct. That's, that's what I think. But uh, see, I understand when it comes to, when we talk about all the narrow applications of AI, like to the point that uh, specific task applications, that is where uh, the precision and the computing matters a lot. Right. And it would matter any which way. But when we, how do I say, pin it down to a general intelligence. See, when we talk about a program which is very smart, it is way smarter than humans. Right. So, like, I've noticed this personally about me. Like, when I walk into a room of people smarter than me, my goal is to walk out at least somewhere closer to whatever the, how do I say, the atmosphere of the room is when I walk out of the room because I want to learn and I want to bridge that gap, go up. 
so that is something which happens with a lot of people and when we have a super intelligent being who is going to do a lot of things for us presumably or for itself there is going to be a competition with those systems also when it comes to humans right uh, and that is how i believe we can actually tap into how do i say our real potential like we are supposed to be one of the smartest species to ever live on our planet but if you think about it a dog can understand what you're trying to say to some extent but we ca- we cannot understand what a dog is trying to tell you so <laughs> like i don't know that when my dog wants to go outside i know it wants to go outside <laughs> no i'm just saying dog dog just cannot say it out loud right when we tell a dog sit down it sits down like it understands what we are trying to say keeping our expressions aside but when it comes to a dog barking getting how do i say uneasy around that is how we know but dog physically did not say it out loud right i want to go outside and then we take the dog out because there's no there's that big language barrier which we have rather communication barrier instead of calling it a language barrier and that exists from our end but not from the end of those not from the end of dog at least or some more animals like a lot of animals can understand what we are saying precisely what we are saying so when we call ourselves the smartest beings and there's going to be something smarter than us assumably i don't agree to it because if you create something smarter than you you are the smart one to create it period that's what so, i can i challenge what you just said mhm so let's go back to the dog example i don't think a dog understands the word sit down i think the dog understands what it hears the tone that it hears and has now learned that whatever noise it's making the chirping sound of the bird that means it's to sit down So so it it would be like me coming in to you and I not really knowing each other and I coming in saying I just think you were so dumb and you know I'm talking so pleasant to you but I'm saying all these ugly things about you and you you're from my tone of voice you're confused because you understand the words that dog that horse that animal is only hearing the tones it does not understand the words I don't think we have to ask somebody smarter than you and me about that but I I think that the the animal world hears sounds and interprets them so if i were to say sit down and that was the way i was yelling at it and it would think well yelling must be the normal thing and you come in real soft tone and it would kind of go okay now what are they saying i don't understand i don't understand sit down please i don't understand that so i i think that's where the the analogy breaks down in my in my mind and the other challenge i think to the thought here is that when you walk into a room and there's this intelligent AI intelligent thing. I don't think it's the most smartest thing in the world. I think it has access to more information quicker than I do and more efficiently than I do. But not that it's smarter because I was the one not the person, but I was the one that created this thing. It's when I'm those, to <laughs> when those devices start you know you you know machine learning I think is a great example. So you, you and I'll go back to the 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 playlist that I like. So it gets used to I don't know whether it's rhythm meters um the the sounds of the instruments I don't know how it what algorithm is behind it but it gets used to that and this is okay I heard this new song has the same kind of rhythm same kind of tones I don't really know it but here this Chris is the song will meet you know be for you that is the I, and that's when I think and then you say no so then the machine has now learned something and i don't know what it's learned but it's a, it knows that chris didn't like this and so now we got to figure out maybe i better observe chris a little bit more and see so that's machine learning to me ai brings in the broader perspective of has chris talked to somebody or does he, has he made a speech somewhere that he talked about his favorite music or has his friends you know, so we're going to get in human intelligence now we're going to get in data analytics we're going to bring in broader the broader pieces of ai um that then says to that machine now i can bring it all together and that, and then when it says first you're going to like the song because it's brought in every piece that it knows then i think it's then i think it's ai right now it's, i still think alexa and those guys and gals are machine learning i don't think they're really ai yet they are just how do i say the most efficient tools to analysis 
in whatever okay. ways they are exactly. and based on that we get but uh, like that is a game of probability right and uh, when we talk about intelligence intelligence itself when it when we talk about human intelligence it is not a game of probability like if probability says like this has happened uh, in our world and we have experienced it hands on like even if there's a 1% chance of doing something or something happening people have pulled those things off but even if there was a 1% chance the very smart analysis engines which we have today i don't know if they just give up on that 1% chance assuming that thing would never happen because probability won't say so and that is what scares me about the technologies today like in the situations where it is 99% possible why would i need something which is smart to help me achieve it <laughs> well let's take it to a business level and so so i'm a chief security guy i i'm, I'm I like secure information security and cyber security forever and ever and ever. We are getting inundated. Security professionals are inundated with data, mm -hmm. and so there is more data than the human being can can analyze and look at probabilities that you're talking about. Bring that all in. So then you want a machine that that thinks faster, quicker, with less error. I don't. I, I, there is always error. I don't care what program you're. There's going to be error anyway. Um, so th they can do that quicker and and that to me when we talk about ai in the business world it to me it's more a machine learning and under my definition where machines are you know they trial and error of different things but their trial and error is a lot more educated than mine's going to be <laughs> what, what i think I, the leap to get to ai from from that machine and i'm going to come back to one other example i'm thinking about to, to come to the next to that level so when i say to to my my data analyst analyst guys that you know do some research tell me if there's correlation between data base one two three and four and this um unstructured data five six and seven and tell me if I, there's a security issue that's machine learning it's gonna it's gonna learn from that first experience you're gonna have somebody assigned data scientists go okay machine where we did one two three four five six seven we did all these steps we do them over and over and we get better. So those are our threat hunters. I'm just using the, the things I use today. Those are my threat hunters that go out and say, think about the weirdest thing. And they'll go, gee, if we, if we put this piece of information with that piece of information and you look at it, they go, are you crazy? But all of a sudden they're now contextual because they thought of it in a different way. The machine that now goes, okay, I can now do that. That to me is still machine learning. The leap, is going to be one where the emotions in it and i know we've talked about emotion before and until we get that emotion piece in i don't think there's true ai because as i said to you before you we learn because there are consequences when we do it wrong get there it. are rewards when we do it right machine where's it going to know i'm going to turn you off you think a machine cares no because there's no emotion yet one more one more application of this that i think was really we, we need particularly now as we work from home so if you look at again i'm a security guy so you're always going to get my my slant on the world you know we're cynical beings so so the insider threat of a company is the hardest one to to figure out although there are always some clues to it but it would be wonderful to have some machine analytics behind here is a population of here are cases of, i don't know fifty thousand insider we confirmed insider threat that we we learned through by human means mm -hmm. now let's write some algorithms let's do some threat hunting using my you know my <laughs> example and and then then i come up with the algorithms and now we have to add the 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 uh, um this whole new new angle of this thing what well, he's working from home so i don't see that he's unhappy all day long or i don't see that he's always copying files <laughs> but the machine's going to see that and yeah we have programs to do that but i i'm so busy there's too much data i want a machine to tell me to do that i still think we're at machine learning and it's going to be very very critical that we have that because the insider threat is still the number one issue that security professionals deal with law enforcement deals with because we cannot predict it because we have there's too much data it needs to be analyzed needs to be correlated and nobody's done that got it so someone listening to this podcast maybe they're going to go i'm going to go write this this will be my company and they're going to make 
<clears throat> and we want we want honorable mention on their on their award or whatever it is. <laughs> I think that'll be the next step because if you think about, I'm now doing analytics behind a human being's um, behaviors, thought processes. Mm -hmm. Why are they mad? And why are they doing this? I'm all now. I'm beginning to teach mm -hmm. that machine, that algorithm, a little bit about the human psyche. But I don't think it'll ever be as smart as me. I just, of course, I just of get, course. <laughs> is all I can do. I'm, I'm slow. My synapses do not are are just not as efficient as that computer's. I would rather say, how do I like see what happens is when it comes to a machine, right? And there's a certain amount of data which is there. So every time a machine has to kind of come around a decision or come around something, it will go through each and every process of data. But what happens is we humans operate on a way where we once we process something, it goes, how do I say, it goes back of your mind to your subconscious. And then whenever you're doing it next time, there are experiences related to that and snap soup we get to the decision and get done with it right yeah, because you've already done all the, the pre-work and it's just you're going right to the answer yeah that's it machines need to learn to do that can and, they <laughs> and that is one thing which is going to be very important when it comes to talking about a real intelligence coming into picture today we talk about machine learning right like so what do you think like my personal opinion to this is when we talk about machine learning, when we talk about deep learning, when we talk about all of this, right? We need something parallel to machine learning, deep learning, and something like not exactly machine learning. I don't think it would be possible to quantify or how do I say convert our emotions into numbers and then get machine learning to understand them. There has to be something parallel to machine learning. There has to be something parallel to deep learning when it comes to understanding emotions. And that is something I've been trying to rack my head around. How and well, what? I think, yeah, that's a great one because think about it. When you are angry, are you angry the same way I am? <laughs> everybody's anger is going to, the facets of anger, how, how many people are on the planet? 7 billion people. We're going to have 7 billion definitions of I'm angry. <laughs> all, having said all that, you know I'm mad. Why? Because my face, my body, my voice, my, your experience that you said. But I think that, as, how do you put that in terms of numbers? And I think zeros and ones. So computers do, do operate through zeros and ones. Right, that's all they do, and and they can only think they can only do one thing at a time, unless they have multi processors. Yeah, Your brain has multiple synapses. <laughs> Every time, how many things do you do at one time? Lots, and so I, this is going to be a real interesting journey. I think that the the definition of AI will change yet again. If you think about it, AI was was this really cool thing. And then it was like, oh, it's too big. And then we got to machine learning. And now we're coming back and adding the elements we've been talking about, which is the human piece of it and the broader thing. And now we're back to AI. But until we get that emotional thing or the consequences thing or these, these things that are hard to define, but we know, mm -hmm. how do we know them? <laughs> I mean, how do we know? But we do. So it'll be interesting to see if we ever get to a, a a Terminator type program, but if all those, even Star Trek, the way, the way I keep thinking about this, every time I thought about AI, I always go, okay, Mr. Spock, I guess is our AI guy. He, <laughs> he has no emotion, right? He's, he's, that, that to me is the model, right? So no emotion, just pure logic. Mm -hmm. and, and yet over the, the Star Trek storyline, mm -hmm. he has a little bit of emotion because why? Because his mom was half, he's half human because of his mom. And every once in a while, that human component surprises everybody. But for the most part, he's just a walking computer and people know what he's going to say and do. And, and he just does it quicker and so forth. But um, it'll be interesting to see the, 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 where this goes. But what, what are we going to use? What are, why are we concerned about AI today? I'm, I'm just, why is this all a big thing today? And, and it wasn't yesterday. Like you. me personally, see, if you think about it, when it comes to your generation, right? Uh, like, what are you telling me I'm old? 
<laughs> no, not like that. Come on, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like when you were my age, when you were my age, like when you were my age, your source of information was other people teaching you and books. Our generation gets to cheat on it. We can simply search for it. <laughs> Like we can simply search for it on a toolbar, which can help you get to ev- every piece of information there is. So when it comes to thinking about things, when it comes to planning things, there's going to be something. Our generation is going to kind of do things differently than your generation. That is obvious. And that is what we've been seeing over time. Whenever technology mm-hmm. is evolved, whichever piece of technology is evolved. So what happens is in this process, like during your time, the world wasn't as connected as it is today. Like if I had to talk to you or record something with you, I sh- I would have had to, had had to come to the US or you would have had had to come to India to do this. Like we wouldn't oh, we have do- a phone call. Couldn't we have done it on a phone call? A video where people are actually looking at a. Oh, would you want a video? Okay, fair, fair enough. Yes, you're right. We, you're right. So what happens is like uh, when uh, there is a drastic transformation in these things. So the way we look at the world changes. So what my idea is like when we'll have a super intelligent system, see, we'll be able to calculate and compute each and every single piece of information at one time. Like now what happens like during your times, it would happen is, this is just my assumption. I could be completely wrong about this. You would, uh, like, we build on one step above. Like, first I learned to operate in around my surroundings. Then I learned to operate the information which is around my city. Then I go to the district. Then I go to a state. Then I go to a country. And then I go global. But here, we have got a cheat sheet where we start from the world and then we pin it down to small, 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 small. Or where we go down. I'll challenge that just a little bit. I think Uh that you're right in that, um, you know, you call it a cheat sheet for your generation. And I would have to say there were things that I cheat sheeted off, you know, like a set of encyclopedias for me was like, wow. Uh And my my parents (laughs) said that. So we always have our cheat sheets as time goes on, right? Um, but I, I would I would say that I, I don't think you know just because your generation standing on the shoulders of mine that you're getting the, the, it's a cheat sheet it's just a normal progress and exactly a super a super super con- intelligent computer I don't think we'll get to until we have quantum computers correct so that quantum st- that quantum state where it's not zero or one it's always zero or one encryption goes away and all banks are going to go oh my gosh and uh, and but then we might be able to start talking about emotion or you know if, if these three things are there with 95% probability mr data from star trek would say this is going to happen <laughs> but, but and I also want to say that, you know, while the millennials, I don't know, you're probably a little old, you're a millennial. I, millennials, you know, have, have a, well, you're a little older, but close enough. And, they, and I actually did a, a conversation, a uh, talk when I was on a panel and a younger, a younger woman stood up and talked about that she was a millennial and the older people didn't understand. And I'm thinking, really? You really believe that? And, and she goes, they don't understand computers and all the importance. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So I, I got up and I said, you know, with all the respect to the former speaker, she didn't know I was going to follow her. I really felt embarrassed. I said, I'm a millennial too. I said, being a CISO just makes you really old. And everyone's like, what? And I said, the, the difference is, is I'm from the prior millennium. So, so you're from, <laughs> it's, it's, so it's an event horizon. So your event horizon of what you see uh-huh. is higher than mine was initially uh-huh. because you're standing up higher. And so I'm down here looking. And so you go to the computer world. Uh, the the AI piece of it's up here, and I'm still looking at the machine level down here. But I think we're all looking at the machine level. So I think it's really an event horizon of what what I'm able to see versus what everyone else is able to see. It's just I, it's normal progression. But I think until we get to quantum computing, and and there's no zero one state, it's always zero one. It's going to be really hard to do a super intelligence. Not I'm, in my opinion, but I'd like you know, to we'll, we'll add to it that. It shouldn't be like Google as a quantum computer 
or X Y Z big company has a quantum computer. Like my the world I see ahead, where we have we have our own personal computers, right? They should be uh, how do I say? They should be quantum computers in its own ways. Then only it it like if we relate to how do I say having quantum computing to have a super intelligent system. So there's this one gap in the world. I could be wrong about it, but this gap will keep on going higher and higher and higher till the point where there'd be quantum computing on every person's desk, or access to quantum computing on every person's desk, and that is where we'd be able to see a lot of innovation or a lot of different applications to AI. Like it is just not money when it comes to AI, right? Like AI shouldn't just teach you how to just make money, because uh, to be fair, there's 900 trillion dollars in the world, and we are over the head nine billion people. Like divide 900 trillion by nine billion, everyone should be a billionaire like that. But it doesn't <laughs> work like that. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> well, let me ask you this question: Does in in do you think that when we get to AI, and I'm going to use, again, these are my definitions. So let me, I'm going to. I read, agree to you. I'm going to, I'm going to do one machine learning and, and AI. When we get to AI, will an AI machine be able to create? Yep, I guess so. But based how on will what. It do that? How will it know? So if you, the way I look at it now, so. Well, that is what was getting. Developer is an artist. Will it, will, can a computer, will a computer be able to paint a Mona Lisa? Or will it only be able to paint a replica of what it's already seen? Will it be able to actually create? And, and is, is creation, creativity, in, intuition, are those things programmable? Will they ever be programmable? Mm -hmm. I'm asking what you think. I, 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 don't, I think it would be nearly impossible. But maybe 200 years from now, I will be sitting up in heaven looking down. They did it. Um, <laughs> they did it. Um, but do you think in, that, in your world that that's how it would be? Yeah. Like, to be brutally honest, like, see, I'm not a technical person when it comes to writing code or developing a model or anything like that. But I also have been racking my head around how we could have, how we can program intuition, how we can program gut feeling, how we can, like, the response, see, how do I say it? Like, it is hard to put in words sometimes. See, it is hard. The point is, when we talk about all these things, right, the way we do things, the way we humans do things, the ecosystem entirely is going to be different for AI. Like the entire ecosystem of the AI is going to be different because like- I, I agree with you, it has to be. Because if not, we're just doing computing faster. I, I agree with you. And like, if we think about it, like I have a couple theories on how we can actually program intuition, how we can actually program, the, the angle of looking at things matters. The perspective matters. Like, whatever discoveries had, had had happened, like even if we consider Newton working around gravity, he had to first see the apple falling down, right? He had to see something and then start thinking about it. It isn't that in thin air he pulled up something and then it worked. Like that is how even we don't operate. Like if we have to, we, if we have to think out of the box, we should know what the box is. And what's the box? Exactly. I mean, and that is a big question. How, you? <laughs> how, how do you program faith? How do you program religion? How do you program, you know, these things? I, I, I think we have a long, long, long way to go. Although I think the curve is, is geometric as opposed to arithmetic as it grows. Mm -hmm. But having said that, you know, we're at, a, we're at a, a threshold where machine learning can make traffic safer, safer. Definitely. And, and, and what I want it to do for me, security guy again, got it. this is all about me. <laughs> you know. This is me and this is the world that goes around me. I, I, want, I want my 
machine learning computer to say, you know, I've seen all these attacks. The next attack that's coming to you is going to be, I want it to predict. I think that's the next level for, for machine learning to help me do my job or a doctor to say, here are all the genetic Think of all the possibilities of that. Yes. Yeah. And, and then bring it down to, I'm going to predict for you. That's, that I think is doable. And I think it's important as part of the journey to get to AI. We have to have the predictive analytics behind it. And the only way you get that predictive analytics is to make the prediction, computer makes the prediction, this is the learning piece, makes the prediction, was it right or wrong? Okay, Absolutely. it was wrong, so let, let's go back and tear it apart, figure out what we did wrong, then it does it right. Okay, let's, and, and that will happen over and over and over again to where this huge database that it then says, factor A, B, C, and 2.6 and 1.3, okay, that means this, because it's seen it before. Back to your example, we've seen it before, we don't need to reanalyze it, it's done but we're not there because the data has not been kept and stored and, and sliced and diced yet. But it is there. like, I could be wrong about this again. It is not the data which matters here a lot. It is the perspective which we use to look at the data. Like, see, like Apple fall. I like to give this example a lot. Apple used to fall down a lot of times. Like there's a lot of apples falling all over the world. But why is it that Newton's perspective could think about it in that, that whatever thought process he had. And that goes to a lot of discoveries or inventions, which have, which we have seen all over the world. So it is a matter of perspective in the end. And we have to, how do I say when these machines who are going, which are going to analyze things for us better, their perspective should be in check. What do you think? Well, yeah, so that comes back to we are governed, humans are governed by <laughs> the rewards. So that keeps us in check. Either the fear of the consequences or chasing after that reward. And I, that to me is critical <laughs> just to progress. And we had, I told you this before, what is that going to be for a machine? I don't know. Um, and, and then when do we say to that machine, go create your own program? Just go do it. And I'm going to, just, I'm not even going to look at it because I trust you so much, or I have so much experience with you. And maybe you are an AI. Maybe this is the matrix right now. I mean, you're just an AI that I'm looking at and you're quizzing me, but and, and I, we're, we're kind of heading there, but I think we need to, we need to allow machine learning to fully develop and, and, and give us the benefits we need. Mm -hmm. And, and, and from that we will learn. And then, and then so that your generation is doing the machine learning, the predictive analytics will then take to the next level. And maybe when, when, when I'm in the grave and you're my age and you're taught and you're being interviewed by a you, you're going to say, you're going to say, I never thought of that. And the young guys can say, Oh, this is how we do it because they've got, they've stood on your shoulders and, and back to your perspective, the perspective, that's where I said event horizon, that the event horizon for him or her, the future you is different than yours. And I think that's what will need to happen. C computers will help make it quicker, but it still will have to happen. Well, definitely, definitely. And I, I agree to it from a very, how do I say, with all my heart. <laughs> so like when we, how do I say this? When we talk about emotions, right? Emotions being a very hard bargain for even some people to understand. So like, like you mentioned, Spock from Star Trek. I like to like, have you seen this series Big Bang Theory? Yep. I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> so I picture AI to be Sheldon. Well, again, there's very, very, he, he tries to get all the emotion out. He just wants pure logic. <laughs> so you're back to Mr. Spock. <clears throat> Gene but, Roddenberry. If you think about it, years ago. by the end of the series, there was this one point where he was fighting for the Nobel. And there were people who plagiarized the thing, right? There were people from Fermilab who plagiarized the entire thing. Like one of them plagiarized uh, his uh, thesis. So at that time, he was at that point where he actually thought about it. It would be wrong to snitch on them. But classic Sheldon would have went and complained <laughs> straight off without even thinking about the consequences. <laughs> so the computer got a little emotional training. 
is what you're saying. Sheldon got a little emotional training. And how long did that take? And I know it's a TV show. It took 13 seasons. <laughs> yeah, so it's, and I think computers are going to be the same way. And the only way computers are going to learn is they're going to make a wrong decision. And we tell them it's a wrong decision. But I think it'd be quicker if there was a consequence to that decision. So the consequence might be, Mr. Computer, I'm going to not give you, if, if this doesn't come right, you do not get to create your own program. But the computer said, okay, fine, I don't care. There's no consequence. <laughs> Some we're, we're going to work this out as we go forward, but that's what you need. That's what's going to have to happen to keep us moving up this chain in my mind. So I want to try and swing for the fences here. What do you think can be one consequence and one reward? Well, I, I think that the, the consequence for a computer would just be to shut it off. Right? So but, mm. but the, the computer is not going to know that that's a consequence. <laughs> and, and so I don't know, I, I honestly, I, when we talked earlier, I, thought, I, I actually had a discussion with a friend last night about this and I said, I, I don't know what a, what a machine would recognize as a consequence because they don't have emotion. Um, Sheldon learned emotion. If you would have told Sheldon in his computer, he wouldn't have carried this off. So what? Okay, think about um, it. I, I don't know I just... what that would be. And, and, and the converse is true. What would be the reward? Oh, you can now create three programs instead of two. He says, okay, I'll go do it. I, I don't know whether we have anything there because risk and reward, consequences and rewards, all those kinds of things have staying power and a computer doesn't really care. Doesn't so really care. think about it. If Sheldon does something wrong, okay? Suppose Sheldon is AI and Sheldon does something wrong. He loses his ability to do physics. He loses his ability to go through comic books. He loses his ability to play games. So similarly, like a computer could lose one of its libraries, which like, see, we get a kick out of doing some things. There's not a lot of things we do for money or there's not a lot of things we do because we want something after those things. We do some things because we love doing them. <laughs> okay. So are you, uh, then are you suggesting then the, that the consequence would be to the computer, you don't have access to this library for two months. You're grounded for two months. Exactly. Um, and so, so let's, you got to get, get to go all the way through that. Though. You can't just stop. And so, all right. So the computer says, okay, I, I, I don't have access for two months. So what? So like when we're talking about a system. Uh, so no, so what? The computer doesn't care. Okay. No, when it, it's down to emotions. When, when you open that floodgate again, I'll go do it. I don't think it cares. It does not understand that, oh, it's going to be harder now to write my application. <laughs> it doesn't get that concept. So I don't think that just because I don't have access to or I delete or whatever, I don't think those are machine consequences. And I, I don't know whether... Um, a Sheldon or Mr. Spock or any of those that we've talked about really understand at a computer level what that means because I don't think it has any meaning to them. Um, until you are, you know, almost, it's like we, we learn how to walk better because we, we hurt ourselves. We learn not to put our hands on the stove because we burn ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, if a computer does that, okay. <laughs> I won't do that again. You told me not to do it again. I promise I won't because the computer only needs to be told once and it moves on, but a human had to do that. I, I don't think the consequence piece and, and maybe maybe listeners of this podcast or other people who are smarter than us will come back and say, well, here's some consequences. Well, that makes sense. But I don't it think would be fun. Have, it would be fun having I don't a think we have the event horizon. I don't think we have the event horizon nor the professional training because I just come back to right now I just would like more machine learning. <laughs> I want more. I want more AI intelligence or machine learning intelligence for cars to drive more efficiently or whatever traffic lights. That's all machine learning. That can, that's yeah. easy to run. So I, I don't know. Thank you. One hundred percent. So yeah, I like we we've been talking for quite some time now, and I believe we are around the wrap up because we have some time constraints. It was great talking to you, Chris. I look forward to a lot of conversations we have on our podcast, like like our podcast we've had. So, uh, what is that one thing? This has been your best podcast so far, right? 
Of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's my reward. I don't want the consequence. I want the reward. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that one thing you would like to leave our audience with? Leave the audience with? Um, fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be fun. I really think so. I, I'm not Me afraid of this. I, I really think we need to embrace it. Even people at my age, because I'm, I've always been different. I've always been pushing the envelope. I think this is going to be fun. <laughs> not be afraid of it. Yes, we're going to make mistakes. We've made mistakes all along the way, and we're still here. Definitely, let's definitely. Let's Thank you, Chris. Away. Thank You're you so welcome. much, Chris. Oh, okay. Thank one second. Have- one, ha, yeah. For I for like when we just got into the conversation hands on, like that is where I officially the podcast ends, where I said thank you. So there's this one part where I have to introduce you, right? We did not get there because the flow of the conversation. I didn't want to break it, so let's record it now, <laughs> so that my editor will just patch it on ahead. Hi, Chris. Welcome to my podcast. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here today. I know it's late for you. It's early in the day for me. Thank you. <laughs> Let's just get on with it. So, Chris, yeah, this is this is the part where she just patch to the video ahead. Uh, uh, okay. So, how do you think the talk was? Like, did you enjoy it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I was back and forth. It was very interactive. I don't want one where you're talking and and you're thinking what you're going to say next when I'm talking. It was very interactive. We, we stepped on each other's conversations a couple of times, but that's normal. That's human. That's <laughs> I, think, I think this was good. I hope, I hope we get some responses because I really would like to know what is the consequence to a machine. To be brutally honest, this is the most different podcast out of all the podcasts which I have had because this is the first one where I'm doing it solo and Albert was not here. One thing. Second thing, we end our podcasts in 15 minutes plus minus. I wanted to do a 40-45 minute long podcast because then it makes sense, right? When you're talking about something, every talk cannot get over in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, I think your boss knows though, um, 15 minutes, human beings, our, our minds... We want to jump to the next thing. So I, I've learned that, that webinars that we've been doing at Cisco, 30 minutes max. I mean, everyone wants to do these virtual conferences. Mm-hmm. And we've done virtual conferences. You really think people are listening for two, three hours? And you're at I home? have seen people listen it for four hours. Like, like yeah, they're, I think they're the exception to the rule. I think most people, if they're like me,